welcome to T-Bone's Best of Roanoke Show. Music, comedy, and conversation featuring HB, the Honey Badger. Honey Badger don't care. Now, on with the show. All right. <laughs> HB, you ready? I'm ready, T-Bone. Greg, are you ready? I am ready. All right, let's, away we go. Greg Trafidlo. Correct. Welcome That's... to the show. Thank HB, you. he is a he's he's performed all over the world. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's one true. of Roanoke's sure. best known musicians. Sessions, yeah, well, well, and if I say something that's unconfirmed, <laughs> you let me know. <laughs> and he's also in a Roanoke magazine. He was named the Troubadour of Roanoke. Oh, <laughs> am I not Whoa. right? Yeah, I think so. In yeah. fact, I just saw Dan Smith on the street out there. There's a a rally going on. Yes, and uh, he was out there shooting. Camera, you know, working with his camera. Okay. And he did that article. It was a nice article, and the rally might have been for you, knowing that you were coming downtown. Yeah, but who knows? I, I believe it was. Yeah, I believe it was. <laughs> but anyway, you've been around for a while, haven't you? I've been here since 81. You came okay. to Roanoke from where? Chicago. Illinois. Right. Yeah, you know, and when I was up there, I was, uh, that's my home area, actually. But uh, bounced in and out of that for years, and... Uh, I was playing with a band up there called the Greater Chicago Bluegrass Band, and I played with them for five years. And in the process, uh, I had a, well, first I went to art school before I went into the service, before I went into everything else I've done. Okay. And uh, a friend of mine, when I was with Greater Chicago, I, she came to the house and I was putting LPs into into sleeves, and she says, "Well, it was a, our bluegrass album." And she said, "Well, if you like this kind of music, you got to come visit me in Roanoke." Oh, so, oh actually, from Smith Mountain Lake area. Yeah. And so I came down, and of course, they're going to introduce me to all the players. Mm. And we went to the ground round. Oh yeah, I remember that. And Tom Olmson and Homebrew were playing, and I sat in with them which was a treat, and uh, Tom and I kept in communication for about a year. I was at that time with Leo Burnett advertising as a writer, and uh, I just said, enough of this, I'm moving down the row enough. <laughs> and I'm glad I did. I've been here ever since 81. Okay. Well, we're glad you were here, too. Yeah. And you've been performing, what, 38, 39, 59, 69? Well, how many years have yeah, you been performing? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> All of them. Right. Not, not the well, last. Actually, I started... In high school, um, but I've, music's always been a part of my life as a kid. But I started, I had a little folk group in high school, and we were BMOC around the, the, on campus and everything, and we were all in a cappella choir, which was kind of weird for me because I can't read a note. <laughs> uh, really? Yeah, all this time. I'm just really dyslexic, mm -hmm. but uh, either can. Uh, Paul McCartney, so I feel so good. So you're in good yeah. company, right? <laughs> so were you born with a guitar in your hand, or is there family genetics involved there? Or you just well, like saw Elvis on TV, what? It's, that's part of it. That's yeah. definitely part of it. As a little kid, my favorite things were, uh, let's see, you know, oh, it's got to be, uh, you know, watching some of the, the the TV shows, and every cowboy had a gun and a guitar, mm -hmm. <laughs> and so I heard a lot of great songs as a little kid, mm -hmm. Gene Autry, and Roy mm -hmm. Rogers, Boy. and all those people, and that really had an effect on me. Plus, I liked uh, stuff like, um, oh gosh, Peter and the Wolf, and all mm -hmm. these things. And back in those days, you you were uh, able to you were. You were just had you were flooded with all types of music. It wasn't just right. country or whatever. But my folks used to listen to Randy Blake and the Supper Time Frolic on WGN, mm. and so I got introduced to that group mm. of people. You know the the uh, the country folks and everything. Little Georgie Goebel was on that show, George and Goebel. Bill Monroe was a dancer yeah. with that group. Oh, a wow. dancer, a dancer, right? The He's, Bill Monroe, mm. right? His his brother Birch was a fiddle player. Oh. I got to play with him one time. Got to play to Bill with Bill one time too. That that's another really? story. We're going to get into that. <laughs> but so you you kind of start off being exposed to all those types of music, mm -hmm. and then in high school you started playing in your folk music, right? But then you were also doing bluegrass, right? 
Right. Yeah. Well, I. Well, the thing is, um, they're they're very much akin of the American spectrum of uh, of uh, music, and uh, so uh, yeah, I was interested in. I'm interested in all kinds of music, internationally and what and classical and such. But uh, uh, as far as what I didn't really didn't start writing until I was with, with with Greater Chicago. And then when I came down here, uh, I had my uh, eyes opened by meeting uh, Billy Ed Wheeler, in, who who wrote Jackson and Coward of the County and uh, oh a goodness. bunch of other songs like that. And in in uh, in Swannanoa, North Carolina, at Warren Wilson College. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what he did, he had it was he was a pre it was a predecessor to the Swannanoa gathering, which is a about an eight week long uh, class, class, uh, classes that uh, on everything from fiddle, banjo, guitar, mandolin, and what all. And uh, that, that just changed my life. I took a lot of uh, uh, songwriting classes, and that's where I met Tom Paxton. And he liked my stuff, and we got to be friends. And he encouraged you to write. So oh, yeah, very much so. So. And then when you got to Roanoke, is, is this an urban legend or an urban myth? But were you the first performer at the Third Street Coffee? Sure Hill? was. Right. Sure. Really? I sure was. <laughs> <laughs> He's number one. He's wow. Fun. Well, it wasn't solo. It was with a, a bunch of uh, other bluegrassers, for that mm -hmm. matter. It was Jimmy Crawford and uh, Earl Henritzi and a couple other people who unfortunately aren't with this anymore and Tom Olmson. And uh, I, then I was with Homebrew for a few years with them and then I got a, a job playing with a bluegrass band out of Carolina called the Bass Mountain Boys. Yes, sir. Played mandolin for them for a couple of years. Got tired of that and came back and got involved with a, um, a couple uh, plays one at Mill Mountain Theater. Cotton Patch Gospel? Cotton, Cotton Patch Gospel. Uh -huh. I, played, I was in that for three weeks. What was that like? I loved it. It was really fun. What did you what did you play? I played mandolin in that. Mm -hmm. I had speaking parts in that. Yeah, okay. That was a real treat. And when, <laughs> you, and when, when the opera, because of that, <clears throat> I was looking in the paper in the Roanoke Times, and they were auditioning in uh, Lexington, Stonewall Country. Right, and I got involved in that, and actually I was hired by Robin and Linda Williams to, to be in that, and we got to be good friends and still are, so it's... Wow. You never know where this is going to take yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> and you're still going. Oh, yeah. 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 You still got the spirit, don't you? Very much so. This was during the days when... The, remember when the banks used to close it from 3 to 4 and reassemble and, you know redo their accounting and come back. Well, it never failed that I'd be going, I'd always be late trying to get to that bank by three o'clock, before three o'clock, because of one particular old man who used to drive his car on 43 at about 20 miles an hour on that, you know, curvy, curvy road. And, uh, that can give me the idea for this song. Our town's not the biggest around, but it does have a stoplight in it. Takes a minute and ten from end to end. If you drive about a part of the limit, that's unless you get behind this old farmer friend of mine. He goes as slow as a bass boat trolls in his rusty, busty, 54 old. I'd have been here about an hour ago. But I got stuck behind Buford. Now Sam McKay on his wedding day was to marry the grade school teacher. He's crying at the aisle, he's closer than a mile, but he just can't reach the preacher. But the reason wasn't sad, it was our one-man traffic jam. He goes as slow as a basketball, rolls in his rusty, dusty, 54 olds. 
I'd have been here about an hour ago. But I got stuck behind you. Don't you know it'll be my fate when I get up to the pearly gates? I'm gonna have to sit and wait, staring out my windshield at his license plate. Cause he goes as slow as a passport trolls in that rusted, busted, busted old St. Peter Peter had been here an hour ago. But I got stuck behind, just my luck behind, I got stuck behind you. Uh, you know, it's a, a love-hate relationship on, <laughs> on occasionally, but uh, I've learned that, yeah, this is what I, I should be doing and stayed with it. Was there some point, Greg, when you said, okay, uh, I've done the advertising world and I'm oh, going to yeah. give this a tumble full time? And right. And that occurred, let me, I have to think on that for half a second here. Um. I was a writer producer for Channel 13. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, at that point, I, I promised myself I was just going to uh, keep writing and keep playing. But there was a contest that I entered, which was in Louisville, Kentucky. Okay. <laughs> and uh, some of my friends from the area, we went to, they were. Uh, finalists in this competition as well and uh, they uh, we, we all went down there and I won the uh, bluegrass country uh, division mm -hmm. and that and so we're just standing around and the next thing you know I won the grand prize and I had told myself if nothing happens for me in a year I was going to quit yeah. and so that just was almost on the day that, a that year you, ago from the day oh, wow. when that happened, and I, then I just, just started going. Well, also I was heavily involved at that time with uh, uh, what is Southwest Virginia Songwriters Association mm -hmm. now, and the Nashville Songwriters Association. Right. Wow. So, so you 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 said it. You based on that you, that boost from the Louisville winning that you, they, it yeah. gave you the confidence to say, hey, I'm going to try this for a year and we'll just see where it goes. Right. And, and, still and then I hadn't played bluegrass after that, but I was writing a lot more and back to my folk roots, and I'm pretty happy with the the way that's been going. Wow. Yeah. To tell I was telling HB before you got here that uh, you've backed several big names and you've opened for some big names. Give oh, us yeah. some of that. Oh, okay. Well, people I've played with, I've played with Bill Monroe, and that's a story in itself. Mm -hmm. That was only one set, but it's good for the resume. <laughs> yeah, sir. Uh, when I was with the Greater Chicago Bluegrass Band, we were at a uh, festival. We were part of a festival in Wisconsin, and on that bill were Bill Monroe, Jim and Jess Jesse, um, Osborne Brothers, all the heavy hitters. Mm -hmm. And Bill's band was on stage right after, well, we got off stage and Bill's band was on stage. And Wayne Lewis was their uh, guitar player. And I'm watching them from the wings. You know, I just got off the stage, I still had my guitar with me. And he breaks a string on the first song. Mm -hmm. And he, Greg, come on over here. So I went in and I finished that song. And I look at him and he's over, you know, just, Jawing with the Osborne brothers while I'm trying to nod and, you know, should, you know, can I get off the stage? And it, I did the whole set. <laughs> really? So, yeah, I can say actually that I did play with Monroe. <laughs> wow. Yeah, well, there you go. And none of my friends had a camera. Oh, <laughs> oh my gosh. Pre camera oh. days, right? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> but you, and Emmy Lou Harris was in there somewhere? Yeah. Oh, uh, Laura Pohl and I. Laura is, I've been playing with Laura since, uh, gosh, 87, actually. She's part of Trifocal, mm -hmm. ex-wife and still your friend. Yeah, we'll get into that. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, uh, when I was working, she was working at Lynchburg General and I was at Channel 13, uh -huh. and we got an opportunity to, to uh, well, number one, to play with the Lynchburg Symphony at, at one time. 
and it's so wild to see all these people with charts on my dopey songs. Oh, wow. <laughs> Which yeah. is kind of cool. But because of that, we got a chance to open for Emmy Lou. How many songs do you think you've written? Hundreds. Hundreds. Uh, yeah. Hundreds. Yeah. <laughs> so probably three, four hundred. And I noticed too, Greg, that uh, I, I would call it the trivecta of venues that you've played in. Oh, yeah. Listen to this. Wrigley right. Field. Oh, yeah. Uh, the Ryman Auditorium in Nashville. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the Bluebird Cafe. Correct. In Nashville, right? Yeah. That's the big three. Right. <laughs> what was it like at Wrigley Field? Well, that was uh, when I was still in Chicago and I was playing with uh, Greater Chicago. And um, the man who ran the Old Town School of Folk Music at the time in the city, they had a guitar day at Wrigley Field. If you bring your guitar, you get in for free. Oh, wow. That is neat. So, so there are a lot of people with guitars. And it was almost like a big hoot nanny at one point. <laughs> but, <laughs> but we had a chance and we played... On home on on the pitcher's mount, oh. and did our did about maybe four or five songs, and then we left there and we went to what was it? I think it was a little tavern within Wrigley Field. I think it was called the Dugout or something yeah, like that. Yeah. And uh, so that was really a treat. <laughs> Man. <laughs> and then let's let's do the, the international thing here. Now you've done you've done Mexico. You played played in Mexico. I played in Ireland. I, play, I played in uh, uh, China, Canada, uh, Canada. Yeah. West, West Virginia. Well, uh, it's one of these days. No, no, I played, <laughs> haven't got that far around the yeah. world yet. Okay, <laughs> right. but China. I got to go back a minute here. Oh, yeah, what, yeah. What's tell us a little bit about that? Well, I was teaching Tai Chi and Qigong for a while okay. back in the early 90s and uh, I took a trip to uh, China with my master to meet our grand master mm -hmm. in, in uh, this particular form of Qigong, a health, healthy movement mm -hmm. uh, uh, discipline. And uh, when we got back from that, we went to, we were in Beijing <laughs> at a little uh, I guess you would call it. They called it a Peking duck thing for the for the tourists, yeah. but it was Beijing, and uh, there was a, a, a trio, an acoustic trio, with one of those round moon guitars and oh, yeah. and a little dulcimer type thing yeah. and, and a little and a drum, and of course my master said he, he's, he's a, he can play he can play. So I got up and you'd be surprised. We, they knew so many. Early uh, Stephen Foster songs. Oh, and and so I did a couple songs with them. So that was fun. Wow, that is interesting. You never know where where this stuff's yeah. gonna go. Yeah, and wow, well, we and then you've done uh, lots of stuff. You've done lots of recordings. Yes. Tell yes. us, give us a figure like how many recordings you've been on. Or been I've been on it. In fact, I just figured that out. Uh, I'm on 102 Real. recordings, but. Uh, many of those I produced myself, probably about 45 or 50 of those. Mm. And then every, every once in a while, somebody will have me play on their album. And so I have copies of all those things. Well, I have a copy of two of them here, a trifocal <laughs> yes. and a solo, mm -hmm. right? Those are a different stories. Yeah, let's see, yeah. which ones do we have? Okay, this is our latest one. It's called Virginia Morning and we're real happy with it. Yeah. Now, this is Trifocal. Correct. Tell yeah. us how you got that name. Okay. We can thank the Roanoke Times for that. Because <laughs> uh, that's I, a good name. Right. Focal. Right. <laughs> yeah. F-O-L-K-A-L. Yes. Trifocal. Uh, <laughs> I can't help but laugh about it when I think about it. Uh, the new, the, in the Times, Roanoke Times, they had a section of who was playing where, type thing. And then it listed a couple of clubs, and uh, there's a guy named, uh, a, a local music hero around town at that time, named Curly Ennis. And so there's Curly Ennis, and then we had uh, Robbie Dummett playing bass for us. And I'm Greg Trafidlo. Right. They didn't check their spell check. 
Robbie Dummett became Rabbi Dimity. <laughs> oh, gosh. Curly Ennis was Curlew Tennis, and I was Greg Trifocal. <laughs> and so I said, that's, that's too good. It's too good. <laughs> so we... So, oh, okay, so that's where that came right. from. Right, so when we met Neil Phillips, uh, who's been playing with us since the 94 uh, in, in the trio, we just said, let's call it Trifocal. <laughs> And you're still performing. Right. And, and HB, I would recommend, I did this as part of our back. We had to vet you, Greg. <laughs> okay. We had to vet you. I know you're uh -oh. well known. I know you've been in Toronto. I know you've been to China. But we had to make sure you're you. And uh, so we went on YouTube. No, no police involved. In this. <laughs> well, we won't. That, we're not no, bringing that up. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah that's yeah. another story. Uh, but uh, we go on YouTube. There you are. Let me mention three songs, videos I saw, which mm -hmm. I liked a lot. Um, one was called I'll Never Find Another You. Another yeah. You. The harmonies on that were so tight and smooth. Oh, and, yeah. Am Thank I you. right? That's, we're a harmony band more yeah. than anything. Okay. And that's what I've always loved that when I was in a cappella choir and all these other things. Instead of singing lead, I really prefer singing harmonies. Mm. Well, that song just... It, oh, it's oh perfect. thank you. And it's perfect. really done well for us. It's had like 72,000 hits on uh, uh, YouTube, and uh, about 500 people have signed on with that song. See? But it's really nice to see Gosh. that people. Well, you take a song like that, which is so good. It was just a fluke that we learned, you know, how many people still love The Seekers. Yeah. And uh, in fact, we've got another one we're going to be working on of one of theirs to uh, put out there soon. Well, I'd heard this song before, but after listening to you guys play it, I went on my uh, music thing and I downloaded The Seekers. And I've got that on my playlist now, but that's just because I watched that video. But another song I liked was an old Beach Boy chestnut, uh, In My Room. Yeah. Uh, you guys do a nice version of that. Well, thank you. But here was the kicker. Uh, you, you guys were somewhere trifocal. Mm -hmm. uh, it seemed like you were somewhere, and you you played this song, which was a very fun, interactive song, almost uh, old brand muffin. Old brand muffin. Yeah, have you heard of that song before, Greg? Oh, uh, that was that was yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, in the video, HB, <laughs> you guys are playing, and then there's a special guest appearance by somebody. Do you remember who that person was? No, I don't. It's Elvis. Elvis showed oh, up. Oh, yeah. He, he always shows up for that song. He does? Okay. He really... <laughs> well, he did a good job. Uh, so that's a fun, fun video. Well, and you guys you. have a lot of fun with it. Old brand muffins. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Did you write that? No. A friend of mine named Steve Key brought it to us. when He, he was a folk singer in the D.C. area. And he came to the... We got to know him really well. And we really liked that song. And we just picked it up. And it's been... But just like with you, it's, it grabs people. And it does. And it's a fun thing. It's fun. Yeah. And that's, we'll what, that's what we are, a trifocal, and we're farsighted. <laughs> but, more, <laughs> but more than anything, we just like to have fun. fun yeah. <laughs> and you guys still go out and do shows? Not as much. Mm -hmm. Neil has been living in uh, Philadelphia for right. 10 years. Okay. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the stuff when we've been reco when we recorded, he, you know, fly it in over the internet. That's right. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, but yeah, we still keep in contact and still write together. That's so nice. But we will, uh, if I'm going to bring Neil down, that's a seven-hour drive, so it's kind of tough. Yeah. So we we have to have some really something make it worth his while to come down to performed out here. And you know, we, we were talking about recordings before, and tell me if this was, was true as well. Um, your first recorded song was recorded for your high school sweetheart? Is, is that right? Yes. Well, Give yes. Give us the backstory on that. Yes. Uh, my high school <laughs> girlfriend, uh, we split up in 19, well, when I graduated in 63, she was in the class of 65. And uh, I was going to go on to art school, and you know, uh, I'm not going to mess around with any high school girls, you know. <laughs> you were too mature. I was. Yeah. I, oh boy, well, that was the only time I was time. mature. <laughs> <laughs> right. And uh, then I hadn't seen her for a, a good, um, oh gosh, probably 
10 years and I was going through a divorce at the time. And uh, I was working in Chicago at Leo Burnett Advertising. And when you come out into Union Station, you're on these ramps and you look on the double-decker cars and you see where I can find a seat. Mm. And she was there. On, oh. And she, she and one of her girlfriends were about to go to Europe. And uh, so I saw her again. And when I got home, I wrote this thing. Oh. And then about five years later, uh, I ran her into her again. And I, by then I was with Greater Chicago, and that was already on an album. So I won her heart again. Oh. But she, but, and that was in the 80s. Then, but yeah, I won her heart again. Not really. <laughs> uh, they came to Roanoke. And she and her sister came to Roanoke when, when Judy was on her way to uh, for a, a job interview in uh, Carolina, <laughs> and uh, she, um, I had asked her when they stayed over, is there ever any chance we'll get to get back together? She said no. <laughs> she said what? No, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no. And then did you take that as a no? Was that a I, solid no? Uh, well, I kind of, yeah, yeah. I, it, it really was, but well, I was, she, she wasn't into bluegrass, and she wasn't into advertising, for sure, yeah. and that's what I was doing at the time, and uh, then um, later, after Laura and I went separate ways, I was living on flat top. And I get a phone call, and it was Judy. She was, uh, all these years she'd been down at the University of Georgia getting her Ph.D. and mm -hmm. such. But she says, I was, I get this phone call out of, out of the blue. I was, and she said, I was listening to some banjo music, and I thought about you, and I <laughs> looked you up on the web. <laughs> With a name like Trafidlo, I wasn't hard to find. <laughs> <laughs> and we decided to meet halfway. We met in Warm Springs, or Hot Springs, North Carolina. Oh. And been together ever since. Wow, <laughs> what a cool love story! story. Yeah. That's a love story there. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> wow. Well, congratulations to Judy. She got she got a good man in there. Well, tell us as we get ready to wind down. Mm -hmm. I know you've seen a lot of acts in your time. Mm -hmm. um, tell us some of your favorite acts, and then tell us some of your music that you listen to now. Well, it's, it's still in the acoustic world for the most part. Mm -hmm. Things, people that I really love. Of course, I love the De Beatles and anything they've done. It's just so creative and perfect as far as their harmonies mm -hmm. and their instrumentation. But um, in the folk world, you know, I, there's uh, uh, one of my big influences besides Tom Paxton. You know, I played with Tom for four and a half years, but. Um, was uh, in Chicago, and that was Steve Goodman. Good. Steve Goodman wrote uh, City of New Orleans. And, oh, gosh. And a few songs yeah. like that. But uh, when I was in high school playing uh, up in old, the Old Town area at a little place called the Fickle Pickle. <laughs> the Fickle Pickle. <laughs> <Yeah>. Right. <laughs> uh, uh, one of my buddies and I had a duet, and they liked their stuff, and we became like a house band every Sunday for their mm -hmm. open mic. And there was this little kid, younger kid, never played, never did anything like that, but it was Steve Goodman. He was years younger than I. Mm -hmm. And that's, he went on to wonderful things. He, sh he should have been bigger than he was, but mm -hmm. he kind of uh, decided to have his dear friend, you know, take the reins, and that was John Prine. Oh my gosh. gosh. Right. Oh my goodness. And when I played with Greater Chicago, um, we did a gig on the south side near uh, University of Chicago at a little place called Jimmy's Woodlawn Tap. It was a great little venue. And we were splitting the bill with a group called the NRA, National Recovery Act, which was two guys, uh, Dave Prine and Tyler Wilson. And uh, they... Um, uh, well, we, we split our bill. We did our songs, and Dave and, his, uh, and Tyler did their... It was pre-bluegrass string band music. Oh. And uh, then at the end of their show, he says, Hey, my little brother's in the audience. You mind if he, he comes up and does some songs with us? So John Prine got on stage with us for about 45 minutes. So I got a chance 
it's good for the resume too. Wow, yeah, no kidding. Yeah. Yeah. Did you see Bob Dylan as a youngster somewhere up that way in Chicago? Or I saw Bob in one of his, I saw him at, a, believe it or not, or, or Chicago's Orchestra Hall. He was the first person to get on that stage in blue jeans. The first person uh -huh. to get on blue jeans. Well, the thing is, Peter, Paul, and Mary had just come out with Blowing in the Wind. So everybody mm -hmm. knew in the folk world and general uh, that song. So it was packed. It's when, when Dylan came down, people didn't know what to expect. And I'd say half of them left at the intermission. Right. <laughs> yeah. But that was probably 65. 1965 yeah. or so. Yeah. And then I just saw him down here like a couple of weeks ago. You did? How was that? Uh, mm. I'd rather not talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you've been on the road, much like Bob Dylan. Is there any little stories you can tell what it's like to be on the road? Uh, well, my road work was primarily with Bass Mountain Boys. We yeah. played all over. We had our own bus and everything, and mm. we played on some major festivals around the South primarily. And that was kind of fun. Uh, that got older for a couple of years. Yeah, yeah. And that's when I went back and that's when I started uh, getting into the plays and that kind of thing and got out of bluegrass primarily. I still like it. I still love the harmonies. That's what I got mm -hmm. into it for primarily. Yeah. Uh, but uh, it's, uh, it's, been, it's been a good ride. I'm, I'm just happy where I am with what I'm doing. Yeah. And, and you're still, you said you still have a performance in uh, February in Bridgewater? Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a house concert type nice. thing. Mm -hmm. So and you're I'm, still out there. Oh yeah, I, I try. I, not very often, but uh, I'm writing a lot, just as much as I've ever done. So oh my God, you I see you have some, some nice uh, antique food <laughs> here and there. <laughs> Well, what draw me, drew me was seeing all that Campbell's stuff. Oh, yes. Uh, my dad worked for Pepperidge Farm. Oh, nice. Which was bought out by Campbell's Soup. I didn't know that. Uh -huh. Well, do you remember back in the day, there was a, a promo that uh, Campbell's had called Soup and Sandwich. Soup, soup and, and Sandwich. That's when they bought out the bread company. Ah, oh, so they Sorry. added the sandwich. Yeah, smart. Very cool. It's marketing, advertising. Oh, yeah, yeah. definitely. All right. All right. Well, as we get ready to let you perform a couple of songs for us, uh, Greg, uh, is there anything else we've left out or anything else you want to highlight? Anything that uh, I've forgotten, HP's forgotten? Well, I really like what you did, your homework <laughs> for today as it is. I, I can't really think of anything. I, I know I will the minute I leave. Yes, you know, and we all do that. I ain't that right. Well, right. I, I don't see why there can't be a part two. Episode. Well, I'd yeah. love to have that happen. All right. <laughs> and when we do, we're going to invite you and Elvis to come back and do old brand muffins. Muffins. I'll, I'll look them up. Yeah. <laughs> Make sure he's not busy that day. <laughs> All right, my man, let's hear some good Thank news. you. Thank you, Greg. Really Thank appreciate it. Well. Yes, sir. Well, okay, let's see what I can do for you. Got hung up in a neon haze, tangled in a black top maze. What was clear began to fade, but now I'm coming home, crossing over into the valley. My long lost friend, Blue Ridge Rising, up to greet me, sweet sanctuary, welcome me in, your tumbling waterfalls, murmuring streams, dogwoods in springtime still bloom in my dreams, white deer. My heart hungers for the hills, so now I'm coming home, crossing over into the valley. Shenandoah, you're my long lost friend, Blue Ridge Rising, up to the 